dog. You can't go. No, we love you though. Okay. 39 weeks today. Good freaking lord, Sam. I looked like this the whole time. <laughs> Whoa. 39 weeks, I know. We're going. We're going. All right, Doug. I love you, baby. I love you so much. So we are checked in officially. I was not aware she was a first time. They said she was a first year. Yeah, that's what she said. I didn't know that. I didn't hear that. I let a nursing student do my. I mean, listen, they learn by doing, so I'm fine. But holy shit, that hurt. There was blood everywhere. But I got my IV. Um, and she was going slow to make sure she did it right. Yeah, it. it Twitter. Yeah, but they learn by doing, and I'm she fine. The, she did the first time. She did, that's, that's, and I mean, I'm totally fine part. with being the guinea pig because, like, I, that's the only way they learn is for people to let them do it. Um, but we are checked in officially. He is. Oh, I think I knocked his little heart monitor off. Um, got this one here. He's very stressed. He, do, he doesn't look it. I think he look. Well, I think he looks it. Um, and my doctor doesn't come in until eight. But it's my doctor, so that's really good. I'll show you guys. Stressed out husband. And I, that is a window, right? Like I'm Correct. just assuming so I can see through it, right? Okay. Yeah, so, so that's gonna be, I don't wanna see. And they asked, they said, um, they said, do you want a mirror when you're pushing? And I went, hell no. And they went, okay, so not just no, hell no. <laughs> you can put a hell no. Don't, don't put a mirror down there. That's where our little boy's gonna be, and you can hear his little heartbeat. Got my blanket. Doing good. Feeling good, my back hurts really bad. Um, that's where like 99% of my contractions have been. Update you guys, look who's here. Look who's here. And she literally used to work with my nurse. <laughs> I knew this was gonna happen. I swear, if you say you're tired one more time, one more time, Samuel Joseph. You better not. We're all kind of just, that's what we're doing. Just hanging out. I got my necklace on. I don't think I showed you guys. I did not realize you got jersey pillow case covers and I'm not a man. Oh, I didn't know that either. Also, I don't think I said this. I might have. We, when we got, we, when we found out we were pregnant, two weeks. We got to the first ultrasound two weeks after they lifted the whole men can't come to an ultrasound or like you can't have anyone in your ultrasound. Um, they, mama, did I tell you yesterday they removed the mask mandate? Yeah. Yesterday. And then they had visitor policy change. So you can change out, but we're not going to do that because I don't want, I don't want Sam to leave and I don't want one at a time because then that's like, I feel like that's a lot more, at least for me, overwhelming to do one at a time. My face is so puffy. But, yeah. Okay. Oh my God, it is still coming out. I don't understand. Okay, so that was absolutely horrible. That was horrible. You did good. But I got my water broken. That was... And she stripped your membrane. And she stripped my membrane. Yeah, the two big things that'll get it going are, are done. Y'all. Right. That's probably the worst. I don't physically understand how my body was holding that much liquid in it. Can I like, get the but, update then? Now, I have got any yeah, um, you can hear him, he's kicking, but that was horrible. So, bad news, good news, but bad news. My doctor's here, but she won't be here all day. Hopefully, we can get her to deliver this baby, otherwise, it'll go to a different doctor because it's spring break. I won't be able to record the baby being born, which really bums me out. We're gonna have audio, which it's okay. Um, but I'm not gonna have 
yeah these contractions are night and day different now but i mean i literally did not know that like a human being could hold that much liquid inside of them eh. i hmm, what do you think i think we're going yeah. Um, did you hear her say it's predicted to be in the upper eights? Upper eights. That's what the doctor predicted, upper eights. Okay, I'm going to do this update on the phone because I don't feel like it in the camera, but we had a little bit. Ezra gave us a little bit of a scare. A big scare, apparently. I was asleep for it. <laughs> I was asleep, and my mom noticed that his... Um, heart rate right? was in the 60s you said Is yeah. it, good? it was in the 60s and I literally woke up and there were three nurses and a doctor standing over they me they were and then they were like can you get on all fours and I was like yeah and so I immediately shot up on all fours and they were like oh you have a good epidural because I can still move but I'm not feeling it so I was like y'all those epidural naps <sighs> that epidural nap was it hit different it's probably my last nap for a long time that was going to be that good, but, um, yeah, progressed and progressed a lot. What was it? It was in like, yeah, so I went a full centimeter in about 20 minutes. So my doctor is leaving around three, somewhere between three to five today. So we're hoping she can deliver him. We're right now sitting at about 1230. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this baby's coming soon. thing out of my freaking arm so clearly a lot has happened um sam is like baby hog to the max um so it was actually amazing <laughs> hold on how would you categorize today like what would you say about today i feel like i'm it's hard to describe it we can call and get you one baby it's hot as Hades in this room, though. Not. It's really not. It's like, so hot in here. I'm wearing a jacket still. And what would you say? How would you say rate this day? Good day. Oh, so, mm. um, it was long. It was 12 hours, but I heard I was pretty lucky. Like from we left our house this morning at 4:15 to get to the hospital. He was born at 502. So I want to share the birth story. I really do, but at the same time, I don't like. I feel like it's one of those things I should share because maybe it's us. I don't think so. I don't know, maybe it's us. Um, I wanna share it because it was, it turned out so good and like I would, obviously I would change a couple things about it as far as like the scares we had, but like I would, it was great and he is perfectly safe and healthy and happy. So it was so hectic when it when finally it, started. It was a little, we had a little bit of a scare. He kept kind of scaring us a little bit. And then when the doctor finally said, okay, let's try push him out every the whole room just changed in a matter of seconds mm -hmm. and we were so focused on just getting him out safely and making sure that you know he was he was good but here grab the camera and show him his little face oh and keep having a little startle reflex oh. show him his sweet little face can you see it look at that precious little face and you guys look at his hair oh. 
Look at all. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, he does not like messing with the hat. Though. No, he does not. Okay, 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 okay. I don't know if it pulls his hair when you do it or not, but. Okay, all right, okay, okay. Listen, 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 listen. Listen, Linda. It's okay. okay. So, yeah, like I said, it, it was. We had some scares. I think it's something I do, I may share, but I don't want to scare other people. I just want to like share it because I think it's important to hear that like scary things can happen and you can still have an amazing birth experience from it. Like it's it's not the end of the, I don't know. It just, it was it was awesome. Um, little man came out sunny side up and so he said, it's been all good, but I gotta get them to reach it. This thing in my arm though, they are, are a little bit, they're a little concerned because I'm a redhead with my bleeding, um, which you are too, baby. Um, they're a little concerned with bleeding and so I have to keep this, this thing in my arm um, until sure that they're not gonna have to give me some kind of medication. So Sam's gonna go shower. And we're gonna close it uh, right here. And we're gonna just call it for right now, my little baby. It's been an amazing day. So it has been about, he's what, like 14, 15 hours old at this point. And a dream baby. Sam is a baby hog baby hug unless he is doing something he takes the baby from me so i have decided to hug him this morning but look at how perfect he does not care whether he is like swaddled fully moving chilling it, do it does not matter this has to be beside him and he is like this i don't know if i told you guys he's eight pounds three ounces and 21 inches long we finally announced his name on social media he's Ezra Miles Robinson sweet little chunky chunky boy with his little lip this right here has posed some problems with breastfeeding but we are getting the hang of it they checked um, hold on. they checked his um, tongue tie this morning they said they think he has one on the top but they don't think it'll be a problem and so he doesn't have one on the bottom so that's really good um, but other than that, I mean, he he has the diligence to latch. He just, it doesn't always hit on the first time. So we're going to get it. We're going to get it. Um, but apart from that, we're trying to go home today. We will have to see. I, I, it feels like it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh. I actually think it's a bad time to feed you, little man. They have about 10, 15 more minutes. And then got to feed him before they do more tests. Seems perfect. So what are we doing today? Going home. Oh, Go ahead. Oh, oh. oh. That does a little startle. It's okay. The taking care of baby method works, but he sleeps like that when you try it. He lets his sleep facing out. But we are going home. We got his car seat up there. Everything's all packed up. I'll show you guys. I haven't showed you yet. Okay, so. This is a nursing like sweatshirt. This is what it looks like from the front, from the side. Still looking about, it's probably what I looked like seven months pregnant. I mean, I looked pretty pregnant very early. So definitely still have ways to go. Okay guys. So, vlog footage was a little chaotic. Let's talk through everything that happened. I kind of want to like talk through the birth story with you guys um, because it was I slept most of the day, and so I don't know. There just like wasn't a ton going on, and then I couldn't video record him actually being born. But little man is sitting in here. He's got about another probably like 15, 20 till he starts to kind of wake up. So. I am going to talk through it with you guys. Okay, so you can see the little monitor right there. I'll grab him in the very end of this video. But um, yeah, so everything was kind of chill and calm. I would honestly say that I was, you know, I've told you guys before, pregnancy wasn't something I really found myself enjoying. I was very anxious through a lot of it. It just gave me the worst anxiety. I didn't sleep a lot towards the end. Um, and I sleep more now with Ezra being born. And I told Sam, I said, even if I'm sleeping less hours, like I'm sleeping better because when I sleep, I'm asleep. There's no like cat nap, which I felt like I took for the past, like honestly three months of my pregnancy. 
So blog starts really early in the morning. Um, up to that point, any contractions I had were in my back. And so they weren't overwhelmingly painful. There was plenty of times when I was like, I'm just kind of like waiting, seeing what happens. Cause I know that this is not, I'm not that lucky. Like I'm going to feel my contractions. They're going to hurt. And when my, my doctor got there, um, she actually like clocked in at eight. So when I got there, everything happened on like shift change. Like I got there and then it was like a couple hours later, shift change. You good? Um, my doctor got there and then she left literally an hour before I gave birth. So I had another doctor who was great. Um, but it was like, she left an hour before and then I had the baby. And then by the time they were ready to move me up to mother baby, it was shift change. Like everything just kind of happened at these weird times. Um, but as soon as she got there, she checked my cervix, checked dilation and decided to go ahead and break my water and strip my membrane. Wow. That was painful. My mom told me, she was like, I think that might be, you good little man? You want to just cuddle? You usually like to cuddle towards the end of your naps. Hold on. Yeah, you just want to cuddle. Let's cuddle. Yeah. Let's cuddle a little bit, my sweet little boy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look at his hair. Look at his perfect little hair. He has such a cuddle bug. Let's see if he makes it. What's wrong? Oh, nothing. You just wanted some loving. Um, okay, so she stripped my membrane and broke my water and that was overwhelmingly the most painful part of labor, hands down. Apart from the contractions, like that was excruciating. And my stomach like shrunk, like a cr like I didn't have excess amounts of amniotic fluid. And so I was like, how, how, how is it possible that a human being holds that much water? And even the doctor, the nurses, everyone was like standing around, they were like, your belly looks so small now. So then she kind of messed with my belly and she was like, I think he's gonna be a big eight, like a, a high eights in the weight uh, category. Even the doctor who delivered him was like, this is a big baby. And he came out eight three, but I'll get there. So she stripped my membrane and as soon as she did that, that's when everything kind of left my back and went to the front. Um, I had told you guys, like I had, I was like, oh, my back hurts leading up to labor. And some of you guys were like, that could be labor. I didn't know that. I didn't know that like back labor, back contractions were a thing. So when they all moved to the front, that was all new to me. Um, Cause any contractions I got were really in my back. And so I was in so much pain. I tried for as long as possible to put off the epidural because I hear that, you know, it kinda depends. And some people will say like, you should wait because someone will say, oh, I feel everything. I feel everything. And it's not that you feel everything. It's just, you got the epidural so early that the pain has increased that you then don't realize it. Um, so I waited, I made it about five and a half hours into labor. I think it was like four or five centimeters dilated. I think it was four when I got the epidural and oh my goodness, big yawn. And um, at that point I was kicking, like I was getting cramps in my legs because my whole body, I would tense my whole body up. And um, so my doctor came in and she was like, I really think it would be a good idea if you definitely want the epidural to go ahead and get it. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get it. So. By the time she got in there, my pain was at like an eight or nine. And I still remember the girl who gave me my epidural. I, she was the CRNAs, the nurse anesthetist. I can never say that word. Um, that's who gives epidurals at our hospital. And they were the only ones wearing masks. They had dropped the mask mandate the day before. I literally could pick that girl's eyes out of a lineup now because she is like an angel on earth. She came back in a few minutes after she gave it to me. She was like, how are you feeling? And I was like, you're my best friend. She was so quick, so efficient. It didn't hurt. And after that, I enjoyed every minute of labor. Like it was just so good. And she told me while she was giving me the epidural, she said, you know, your pain right now, what it's it at? I said like an eight or nine. And she said, the goal is to get it down to at least a three. She was like, we can't guarantee that it's going to be a zero. When I was actively pushing Ezra out, I would tell you that my pain level was a zero. Um, so I had one of the really good epidurals where you can not feel anything, but you can move. So if they were like, we need to get up on your knees, I could do that. So we are hanging out. I kept sleeping. I literally slept 95% of my labor. And what I think really made the huge difference was every time my doctor would come in, she would strip my membrane again, and that would just get things moving. So my whole entire labor from start to finish, like 4.50 when we checked in to him being in my arms was 5.02 p.m. 
So it was like right at 12 hours. And that's what I think kind of got it moving along. My body seemed to respond very well to that was she would come in and strip my membrane every single time. She only took my, my cervix like three or four times. It wasn't excessive, um, but it just made everything move fast. And so when I had my patrol, I couldn't feel it. I was like, do whatever you think is best. So um, I think it was like 12 o'clock was the first time that little man decided to give us a scare and his heart rate dropped to the 60s and I woke up and there were three nurses and a doctor standing around me and I knew that wasn't okay, but I could see by the look in their eyes, they were like trying to remain calm and one of the nurses was smiling at me and she was like, it's okay, nothing's, nothing's wrong, we're just trying to make sure the baby's, you know, we're trying to get him moving and I could just tell by the way the one that was behind me was like frantically moving pillows trying to get me in a different position that something was wrong. So once they leave, they kind of settle down. I realized like, okay, that was bad. Um, so his heart rate was really low. He's smiling. Um, his heart rate got really low and the doctor came in and then was like, you know, I really don't want to deliver this baby via C-section. And sure enough, we got him stable, he was good. So the second time it happened, I don't know if it was, if I was again asleep for it, I would wake up with someone messing with me. Um, the second time it happened, I think it was like closer to about two or three o'clock. Doctor comes in again, bunch of nurses rush in the room. They're trying to change posi positions. One of the things that I kind of heard, I was really into days, was something about my blood pressure. I don't know if it dropped or if it was too high, but basically whatever was going on with my blood pressure was agitating him, his heart rate was low again. So that's the second time I hear C-section potentially could happen. So I'm still not scared at this point. Um, except for a woman down the hallway who was having a unmedicated birth. And I just shout out to y'all who do that because that was, oh my God, she was down the hallway and it sounded like an exorcism was happening. Like she was in so much pain and I just, I felt for her so bad. Um, so that was the second time that the word C-section got thrown around. And when they left, my mom kind of looked at me and she was like, listen, cause my mom was a labor and delivery nurse. She said, I want to be honest with you, sometimes cords get wrapped around necks and it's, you know, it happens. And she was kind of just being honest, not really um, trying to scare me, not, you know, giving me the worst case scenario, but she was like, I just wanted to just let you know. And my nurse actually came in and she said something about it too. She was like, you know, sometimes cords get wrapped around necks. Um, it's pretty common. It's more common than people think and it's okay. And I was like, Okay, that's my worst fear. Like that was my entire pregnancy. My worst fear was that his cord was gonna be wrapped around the neck. My doctor leaves at the end of about three o'clock. It was like towards the end of three. And the new doctor comes in and literally I was asleep, got woken up, everyone trying to move me around and kind of change positions. And the new doctor, I had met her, but like this was the first time I was seeing her on shift. And it was like so awesome for her to start the shift walking in telling me, hey, you're gonna have a C-section. And she was like, I'm gonna be honest, I was walking in here to tell you a C-section was happening. And at that point, his heart rate, they got it stable again, but this was the third time it happened. Um, I had been in labor for about 12 hours at this point and I was fully like dilated, everything was ready to go. Um, they like checked me right as she was like in there, they had just checked me and I was at like nine or 10 centimeter, nine or 10 centimeters. So they were like, you know, she's ready to push. Um, and so she said, let's give it about 15 or 20 minutes and then we'll see where we are because I'm not happy with what's going on. And I said, you know, you're the doctor. If, if you think I need to have a C-section, I'll have a C-section. And that's the third time the term, well, sometimes babies have cords wrapped around their neck. And so at this point I'm like, okay, he definitely, they think he has his cord wrapped around his neck. And I was kind of, that's when things I think took a turn for me. I wasn't really scared because at the end of the day, everyone was like go time ready. Um, but I just wanted him out because I've told you guys, like my anxiety, I just wanted to put my eyes on my baby and know that he was okay. So they pulled the stirrups up and she said, let's just do a practice push and kind of see where we're at. And I did a practice push and she literally stood up and took her cardigan off and she was like, okay, let's have a baby. This We're just gonna do this, we're gonna have a baby. And the room filled with people and it makes me emotional to think about. And there were 10 people in there and they had NICU in there and they had respiratory. And I started pushing and it wasn't bad at all. It was like, see, I didn't feel any pain. I just felt a little bit of pressure. And I was pushing and my mom was like, oh my gosh, everyone was like kind of voting because they knew that I really wanted a redhead. So like the nurses would lean down and come look and they'd be like, I think he's a redhead. I think he's a blonde. And I could feel him kind of like, I could like start to feel him get a little bit closer. And at this point they had me like pushing in like three sets of 10. 
And um, I actually ended up pushing him out, not in the middle of a contraction. I just couldn't stop. Like once he was here, I was just like contraction or not. This baby's coming. He was born sunny side up. So he was born face up. They're supposed to be face down. And when they pulled him out, he, I looked down and he had the cord wrapped around his neck twice. And I just kind of paused and I was like, he's not crying. Is that okay? And they said, yeah, they were like, we're going to stimulate him. And I could tell, like, I could tell the room. No one was nervous yet. Like we did have NICU in there. They said they warned me. They were like, we're bringing in NICU. We're bringing in respiratory because if we don't call them, that's when we need them. So it's better to have them here. And she laid him on my chest and he literally just burst into like this big cry. And it was the best moment of my entire life. My mom took this picture um, a couple seconds after he was born. I like pulled him up and I wanted to look at his face and it was just like the best, the best moment of my life. Like I've told Sam so many times, like I've been alive for 27 years and I only started living like on Friday when he was born. Like this baby is the best thing that ever happened to me and I can't believe he's mine. Um, and it was just like the best experience ever. Like it was very scary at the end, but like it was scary for Ezra. I don't think I was very nervous or anything until I just saw him and I saw the cord wrapped around his neck twice and I just wanted to make sure he was okay. But I could tell that people weren't worried. Like they just didn't, no one came off as worried in the room. They came off as like, this is a very common thing. So as soon as they heard him cry, respiratory and Nikki left and they just started kind of working on him. He was crying. I was crying. <laughs> uh, and we just, we just kind of all just sat there in this like, dreamy bubble and Sam cut the cord. Um, they let me do an hour of skin to skin. Little man was such a champ in the hospital breastfed. Like he didn't have a couple latch issues, but we checked him for a tongue tie and they said he only had one on the top, which they don't think was going to be an issue. And sure enough, here we are five days out and this kid like latching is not his problem. It's staying awake. <laughs> like he doesn't want to stay awake to eat. And we do, cause he's not back up at his birth weight yet. We do have to wake him up to eat versus like letting him tell us. But it, it was the most incredible day because it was only 12 hours. And we, when I was awake, like we were laughing and joking, listening to music. And um, only did the last 20 minutes kind of get really scary. But by the time they got scary, it was almost over. So it was just, it was a dream. And um, I don't know if it's TMI to share. If you think it's TM, too TMI to share, you can like cut out here. Uh, I did not like, I haven't had bleeding issues. Um, I drank raspberry leaf tea for like seven weeks leading up to labor. And I heard that that can help like strengthen and tone your uterus. I don't know if there's like really truth behind that in the sense of like bleeding, but I have not had really bad bleeding. Um, I had one, first degree tear, I believe it's a first, one first degree tear and it's internal. So it has not been painful postpartum as far as like recovery goes, has been, I, I hate to be this person. I told my mom I feel so guilty. Like I've had periods that have been worse than this postpartum recovery. Um, the worst part to be honest has been the hemorrhoids, <laughs> but they did kind of heal very quickly. Um, out of all of that, I got this precious little boy. His name is Ezra Miles Robinson. He was born um, April 8th, 2022 at 5.02 p.m. He weighed eight pounds, three ounces. He was 21 inches long and an absolute dream. Um, my husband could write the book on how to care for your wife in labor and postpartum. He has been nothing short of absolutely impeccable and I knew he was going to be a good dad. I knew he was a good husband, but I did not know he could be this level. Acts of service is Sam's love language and he has, that I think has really shown this week. Um, he has just, he's incredible. Like I will be very scatterbrained. I'd be like, oh, I need to make myself breakfast. Like I'm super hungry and I'll turn around and walk off and get distracted and doing something with Ezra. And I'll like turn around and Sam will have like a plate of pancakes and like coffee, like just sitting there waiting for me. Um, and then he's very big on being like, you need to go eat. And he like, won't let me get distracted or like let my, my food get cold. He's like, whatever needs to be taken care of, I can take care of it. You need to eat. So, it's just been a dream. Like we're in this like dreamy little newborn bubble and I cannot believe Ezra's finally here. Like I cannot believe that this adorable little baby is mine. 
think Amazon's here. Um, I can't believe that this adorable little baby is mine. I, I can't believe that he is real. I probably say thank you God like 152,000 times a day and I've told you guys on Insta, like when I get to heaven one day, the first thing I'm gonna do is drop to my knees and thank God for making me a mother because this is like, this is what I was meant for. Um, so, hope that kind of clears up some of the chaos that was the birth vlog. Um, but I got this little man I gotta go feed. He, this is like literally what I have to do. with. Like, he just lays <laughs> and he doesn't really wanna wake up. So I told Sam I'm so ready for this kid to be back up at his birth weight so he can tell us when he's hungry and I'll not have to like, kid, you gotta wake up. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching thank you for loving on our little boy thank you for showing me all the love the past 39 weeks he was born on 39 weeks to the day um it has been pregnancy was hard but it has been a dreamy experience to have this little baby in my belly and it's even more dreamy to have him here now i'm so perfect i'm so perfect he is also a big cuddle bug. Like this baby right here, you do this. Like he absolutely loves to be held like this. Look at that hair. Oh my gosh, I could just eat him with a spoon. Like I'm convinced heaven just smells like newborn babies. All right guys, so that's it. You gotta go feed my little Ezra. Yeah, let's go eat. Oh my goodness. Bye y'all.